If you want to see amazing and exciting duels, informative and entertaining top 10 lists, and everything else that's just great about the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, you gotta watch the Capital G Show. Shout out to my homeboy Dante. Hey. What's up YouTube? Capital G here. So I'm talking Spirit Beast in this video and why I think that this is just going to be a viable deck for like the foreseeable future. Like I think it's never going to be lower than tier two. I think it's always going to hover around that tier 1.5, tier two, maybe even tier 1.25 area where it's a threat to win any regional, top eight, any YCS. And um, I kind of feel like it's very comparable to a deck like Sir Teller Knights. Even if you don't see it topping, even if you don't see it at your locals it's still going to be part of the competitive meta and this is actually Irvin Brenton's version he took this to uh, YCS Columbus and got top eight and I believe uh, this is probably the most impressive feat for uh, Ritual Beast yet. Like, I think that this is their biggest accomplishment, especially considering how big um, YCS Columbus was. I think it was over 1,600 people. So to, you know, say I did better than just about all of them is damn impressive. But I think it's for two very different reasons. And the first, and I think that most people won't argue this, Spirit Beast is a very complicated deck. And I don't just mean learning to play the deck or playing it correctly. I mean playing against it you know it, it, it's very it's very easy when you play against certain decks to just learn what your opponent is going to do through repetition you know if you play Sir Teller Knights enough times probably after about the third time you realize okay he's making all his plays with Deneb and Altier if I hone in on those two cards if I stop those two cards from resolving if I make sure that those two cards aren't in play I'm probably going to be in a good position to win the game but with Spirit Beast can you really say that? Like, what are you going to what are you going to stop in this deck? I mean, I actually watched the top eight match and his opponent had Valor and it, it, it looked like he really didn't know when he wanted to use it. And that's because any combination of a beast and a tamer can get you to ulti Kanahawk. Now, everybody knows, even if you're not super familiar with Ritual Beast, everyone knows what Spirit Beast Kanahawk does. I mean, this is the card that gets your deck started. Not only does it get you your free searches for, you know, steeds, ambush, bonds, but then it, it essentially can turn into a different monster, a monster with super high attack or a monster that has like ultimate defense. So I, I think that even though people know to stop Kanahawk, it's very difficult because if you use uh, an effect Valor or a breakthrough skill on one of these and your opponent has another way of getting out the other part, they can easily just contact and it's like you kind of just did nothing. And then another reason why it's so complicated to play against the deck is it is damn hard to keep track of what your opponent has special summoned and what they have not special summoned like what they normal summoned what they special summoned which effects they have used because there's so many of these little mother lovers and they're i mean they've been adding new cards in i mean this zephyr pelica they didn't play that you know they didn't play this card a month ago they didn't play this card at the beginning of the format that's just another card that people are like wait did you special summon this last turn wait what did you did you teleport it out did you normal summon it it's a lot to remember and as as far as playing it and this is one of the reasons why i feel like spirit beasts are still kind of like they feel like an, an underground deck the deck has without a doubt the highest learning curve of all the meta decks in Yu-Gi-Oh right now so it's it's very intimidating and a lot of people are just like well you know f this if i can just play my sertello knights and all i have to do is just deny about to your deny about to your deny uh, maybe let's throw in a vega in there call it a haunted make trevor you know what i mean where it's a deck where you only have to learn a little bit of plays it's much more inviting to play players who are you know like me lazy and deck like this can be intimidating so that kind of translates into net this deck is never going to have like a huge backing it's never going to have a following where you know all right man it would 25 percent or 25 percent of the field at the ycs was spirit beast you know what i mean that's how you end up getting on kunami's radar and some of your cards end up getting limited or hit even if they don't necessarily deserve to be look at a card like bottomless trap hole that card was hit because everybody ran the maximum amount of bottomlesses until Konami was like, ah, fuck this. Let's just go ahead and limit it. And the second reason I think that this deck is going to be viable, viable for a very long time is because it is almost identical <laughs> to Infernity, but it doesn't get any of the Infernity vitriol. Like no one, if you ask, if you went around your locals and you asked, what do you think of Spirit Beast? Or what do you think of Ritual Beast to anybody? People would be like, okay, they're pretty cool. I mean, some people might say that they suck, but if would anybody actually be like, I hate the deck. I mean, it's so degenerative. Like nobody would say that. But the thing is, 
on the low key, it, it, it kind of is. Like, <laughs> the deck operates almost identical to Infernity, but nobody hates it. I mean, you could argue that the OTKs and the first turn just, oh my god, I can't breathe locks aren't nearly as bad as Infernity, and that might be the reason why Infernity was, I mean, the deck has been completely stripped where Archfiend's at one, Barrier's at one, Launcher's at one, like, the three best cards in the deck are all limited now, and while I don't think that Spirit Beasts have, uh, like, that, I don't think that there's any chance that that's going to happen to the deck, but if you just compared the deck, you know, mano y mano, I would say that Conahawk is very comparable to uh, something like Infernity Archfiend, I would say that Steeds is very comparable to something like Infernity Break, and I think that Ambush is very comparable to Infernity Launcher, although you don't get the immediate benefits of Launcher where you can get an Archfiend and a Necromancer back and immediately OTK your opponent. With Ambush, you have to summon them in defense mode. They can't attack. So it's kind of like Konami did adjust it a little bit so that the deck wouldn't be able to OTK as consistently as a deck like Infernity. But the combos and the looping, it's pretty much the same. And I think that... It's very easy to misplay against this deck because there are so many different ritual beasts. They all have different effects. It's hard to keep track of if your opponent has special summoned them, you know, yada, yada, yada. Sometimes you may use, all right, I'm just going to, I'm going to book a moon at that petal fin to make sure that I can regeki it. Oh, wait, he, he uncontacted. Oh, fuck. There goes that plan. You know what I mean? Like there's so many different things to remember about this deck and it ends up being where people just constantly misplay. Even if you watch some of the the, the spirit beasts, um, the spirit beast match the top eight match or the feature match i think it was round seven even the commentators it, it was difficult for them to constantly know and keep up with all the effects because it is such a complicated deck so let me know what you guys think there actually was a really good feature match if it's on kunami's live stream i can actually get it and upload it if you guys want i'm not gonna do it if, if nobody wants to watch it but it, it was an amazing match it was um spirit beast versus necros and i don't know i feel like this deck is going to be around for a long time and even if you don't see it i feel like it's going to be a better pick like i i kind of feel like it's better than like it's a better pick than yosinju it's a better pick than volcanics oh you know what and i think that there's one more thing that aids this deck and i think that it's kunami's constant assault on floodgate cards you know the the less floodgate floodgates that there are in the game the better that spirit beast gets because all the floodgates i mean all the the main ones lose a turn vanity's emptiness skill drain they all really really hurt this deck i mean obviously d fissure and macro don't hurt this deck at all but most of the big floodgates really really hurt this deck and if kunami keeps limiting them it just makes this deck look even better because this deck doesn't really rely on floodgates you see that this guy didn't even main deck d fissure and macro he actually went the vanities route which is completely unexpected so anyways thank you guys for watching as always subscribing makes life happy